And now, Starliner Media presents Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza with your host, Michael Boswell. All right, it's time once again for Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza. This time, Steve March Torme is with us. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, how's your How's your weather there? You know what? It's been unseasonably warm. We'll, t- we'll take and it. I was just going to say, as much as it is it's nice to have a white Christmas, I'm really okay with this. I, I hear you. I hear you. I, you know, I have uh, I have a couple of daughters, and like most kids, they love when it snows. They go, oh, it's so pretty outside. I love when it snows. I said, sure you love when it snows, because you don't have to move any of it. You <laughs> exactly. don't move the snow. That's what dad does. So I'll, I'll take this, too. We had a... Uh, we had a, a big dump in um, uh, in Appleton, Wisconsin, about four days ago, and the, the whole driveway covered in ice, and it's all gone. It went in one day. It was sixty degrees yesterday. It's, it's Midwest weather, as you know. Well, exactly, because we're uh, uh, in the Chicago area, so yep. we know exactly uh, what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'll tell you, it's, uh, Christmas time, obviously. Let's talk about your new record. I remember Christmas time. What, did you get a chance to listen? I did. And you know what? It is what I call a fireplace song. Uh, no, I have not heard that yet. And that's a very good description. That, that's, a, that, yeah, that's an apt description. It's almost kind of a Norman Rockwellian song. Exactly. Well, you know, what, what's nice about it is the fact that you capture the essence of a, of a traditional Christmas song, or I should say like a, a mid 50s yeah, traditional you know Christmas song, uh, yet it sounds current. Say, but when you hear it, it's like you can just envision being in front of the fireplace with the stockings on the mantle and everything, and it's you know very nice. Well, I, I appreciate that. I take it as a compliment because that really is what the imagery of the song was supposed to be. And I didn't purposely go about writing this thing. Well, you know, we live in turbulent times, and I, I need to write something that that is that is calming and and uh, you know family oriented just kind of came out that way. You know, there are a lot of Christmas songs and some of them are are great songs and some of them aren't as great. Uh, And I wanted to come up with something that was really from the perspective of, of kids looking back at Christmas. I've been doing a lot of interviews about this song. We've gotten very lucky with it. And I I realized that, you know, when you're eight years old, Christmas, you're counting down the days, you know, on December 3rd, is it here yet? How many more days? Only 21 more days, only 20 more days. And then you get to Christmas day. Can we open our presents? Can we open our presents? It, there's a real excitement to it. And when you become an adult, your perspective changes a little bit. It becomes, gee, what, what family members do I have to see this year? And <laughs> uh, how hard is it going to be to get a parking spot at the mall? It, it is different. And I wanted this from the perspective of really, you know, kids looking outside and seeing, evergreens and and actually hearing christmas carols and that still is done people still go around and sing christmas carols right uh so i appreciate the the fact that you you recognize some of the imagery in this and that's really what i was trying to evoke something sentimental and and nostalgic and and hopefully it works yeah well you know when, when you're doing sentimental nostalgic songs it's a real fine line because it's real easy to get cheesy with it intentionally yep. or unintentionally yeah, but yeah, your song does not. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, I I agree with you. If it's if it's too saccharine, those molars start shaking, and it's like, no, oh, you know, a little too much there. But I really do. You know, some of the lines that really do resonate for me. Um, I'm driving down my childhood lane, past a life that once was mine. A new family lives inside that space. Uh, I remember Christmas time, and that does happen. You know, you move away from an area, you come back and visit. There's another family there. And you start thinking about the memories you had in that house. And uh, that kind of, that was part of it because I, I, you know, when my, my best Christmases was when I was a child, probably from, I don't know, age three to about 12. And they were spent in Westchester County, New York. And that little town really was like one of those little Christmas globes. I mean, Mm -hmm. it was, it was magical. And I had a great family and we felt protected and we felt secure and that's, you know, that's all I've ever wanted from my kids. So that's really kind of how this song came about. Is there a particular Christmas that comes to mind when you look back on those times? Hmm. 
Maybe the last one, because it was one of the last ones that I had with my stepfather who brought me up. Um, yeah, I just think it was maybe maybe the last one that we had in Westchester County where I was still. Life was, you know, it all looked like it was going to be terrific. And, and I was playing Little League baseball. And I think I got a new bike for my Christmas. I, I think the last time, you know, that part of the family was together for, for your listeners who may or may not know. Um, you know, Mel Torme was my real dad. And of course he wrote the Christmas song 76 years ago. So for me to come back 76 years later, I really kind of by accident came up with this song and my folks got divorced when I was very, very young. So I was brought up by Hal March and it was a completely different family. Uh, but again, it, it was, um, it, it wasn't leave it to beaver, but it was a pretty good, you know, all American kind of family. And that's, that's the best memory I can think of. And also, you know, that I have kids. It is nice that my my two girls who are teenagers still like decorating the tree. They still like bringing out the ornaments like they were, you know, 10 and 12 years old. It's nice to have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me this. When it comes to, to music, you, you Tormes have done pretty well with Christmas songs. Is there, yeah. a Chris, is there a Christmas song, besides obviously the Christmas song, mm -hmm. that, you know, when you hear it, it just really sets the mood of Christmas for you? Um, have yourself a merry little Christmas. I think it's a lovely tune. And, and, you know, every time I hear some of these songs, you can't help but hear Karen Carpenter's voice in your head. That album that she made with her, with her brother is really pretty exquisite. I mean, she sang so beautifully, uh, that one, you know, the, the, the lyrics of that, um, Christmas future is far away. Christmas past is past. Christmas present is here today, bringing joy that will last. It's nice imagery. Um, from a sentimental point, um, I'll be home for Christmas, which I understand was written from the perspective of a World War I soldier who knew he was not coming home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a really melancholy, sad tune, but beautifully written. We, we're in the middle of doing a, a 10 concert run right now. We have 10 concerts here in the Midwest, and we're lucky to have them with, you know, what's going on in the world. So uh, it's, they're called For Kids from 1 to 92, which, you know, lifting a, a, a line from Dad's song. And one of the songs we do is a tune that Charles Brown recorded and wrote in 1960 that was covered by the Eagles called uh, Please Come Home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it's a song I wasn't really that familiar with until I remembered the Eagles version. And we do that in our show. And I like that song a lot because it's a, it's not your atypical Christmas song. What do you see the difference in a lot, a lot of Christmas songs over the past, you know, couple decades, what have you, a lot of them, if you took out the Christmas lyric, you wouldn't know they're Christmas songs. What do you think it is that makes the music itself sound Christmassy? God, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I think to an, obviously to an extent it's instrumentation. I mean, you know, your, your classic rock songs, whether they're done by journey or hall and oats or steely dan most of them don't have jingle bells in them so you know i think the instrumentation you know a lot of songs that that are written for the holiday time have jingle bells in them uh but you're absolutely right you know someone we were talking about this with a musician the other day that a lot of the christmas songs even not in the last 10 20 years but going back to the 40s are really more about winter than they are about christmas mm -hmm. let it snow is more about winter there's not no mention of christmas a right. uh, winter wonderland, uh, Frosty the Snowman. It's not about Christmas; it's about winter. But I think the answer to your question is: I, I think it's any any suggestion of Santa or Jingle Bells, and you've got a Christmas song. It's kind of what it evokes, my opinion. Well, you know, kind of hard really? hard to argue those. Yeah, I mean that that that's about it. I mean, they all do work. I mean, Silent Night is not really about Christmas. Well, I guess it is. They do say Holy Night. Um, but I, I guess it's all a matter of interpretation, but it, it, a lot of it is instrumentation. You hear strings and you hear sleigh bells, pretty much got a Christmas song. Yeah. Now tell me this, what was the last new or newer Christmas song that you heard where you heard that and said, wow, that's, you know, that's something. The one of mine that you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my honest answer. Um, okay, we can check that off the list here. Okay, we yeah, got that one. I'm the one you're playing. I, I, <laughs> I guess um, Mariah Carey's tune, which is, became a huge, a huge record, and it really is a pop record, but it does work. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she captured something, and 
you know, this, this tune of mine that you're playing has now been added to 42 stations in three weeks. And that doesn't happen. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in radio also. I, I host a radio show here, have in Wisconsin for 10 years. And I know how hard it is to get airplay for any record, if, especially if you're an independent artist. And uh, to answer your question, the, the fact that we're, that we're getting that much airplay kind of indicates that it, that it, that it's, it has struck with people and the Mariah Carey tune that that's, that was my point I was getting to. When you write a song like this, you don't know if it's going to have legs or not. I'm sure when dad sat down and wrote the Christmas song, I don't think he and Bob Wells walked out of the door and said, this is going to be on for the next 70 years. Who knows? <laughs> right. You know, there are some songs that, that resonate and they stay and Irving Berlin wrote, um, White Christmas. Did he know it was going to be a standard? I don't know. You don't know until you write them. Uh, but I say Mariah Carey's tune is, is probably the most recent that I, I said, yeah, that's going to be around for a while. That's a, a well-constructed pop hit. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. And she really captured, well, yeah, the uh, the sound of those Phil Spector, Darlene Law Absolutely. You know, records. And there are a couple of chord changes in there. There are a couple of sevenths that they use that really, the, those particular seventh chords make that song pop. It's what gives it it's a little bit of, little bit of a turn your head like, oh, okay, that, that's a cool chord change. And you're right. It's Wallace sound. It's real Phil Spector-ish. Good call. Yeah. Well, say you, you mentioned your dad's song and I had read that when he was pitching that publishers didn't want anything to do with it. And I'd read that one, one publisher said, why would I want a song that would only get played one day a year? <laughs> and I wow. always thought if that's true, you know, that guy had to be kicking himself <laughs> for, for passing on that song. Yeah. Well, that's probably the same guy that said, I don't want a group from Liverpool with long hair. Well, so where am I going to go with that? You know, um, they wrote this song. And from what I understand, I think part of that was because of the time of the year that they wrote it. It was written in July in 1945. It was a sweltering July in Los Angeles. And I got a feeling that they probably went into some publishers and they said, really, you're pitching me a Christmas song. I'm just trying to get the air conditioning to work. <laughs> um, they took it to a guy named Carlos Gastel, who was Nat King Cole's manager. And from what I understand, I don't know the story is exactly accurate, but they played it for Nat and for Carlos. And they said something along the lines of, yeah, it's a nice tune. We'll think about it. And they left the office. And apparently Nat said, get him back in here. I want to hear that again. I want to hear that song again. And he said, I'm going to record this. And they did two different versions. And as it turns out, Carlos Gastel ended up also managing my dad. So it was just, you know, one of those confluences that, that happened by accident. Uh, and yeah, you're right. You know, it, it's serendipitous as to whether someone says yes or no. And there might be some great songs out there that we've never heard that we're never going to hear because someone said, oh, I'm not interested, not the right thing, not my kind of, not the right time of the year. Uh, I do want to share this with you. Uh, I, I like my version of it because I happen to think I'm a pretty good singer. So I, I would like to have, my version be the one that people will remember and that this becomes perennial. But if it's not me, uh, the person I hear singing this and I sent it to them yesterday, I sent it to their management. I hear Vince Gill singing this song. And I think he's, uh, he sings like an angel. He's got a beautiful voice yes, he does. and he's got a, a sentimental voice and he would bring in a country crowd. And this song is kind of right up their alley. I mean, it's a real family-oriented, right down the middle of the bowling alley kind of tune. So we'll see what happens. I, I, hopefully, he'll take a listen. Yeah. We shall see. Hopefully. We shall you see. never know. Yeah. That's it. All right, Steve. Well, tell me this. Is there any uh, any other Christmas uh, story, song, or memory that you'd like to uh, add here before we wrap this one up? Um, well, I, you know what? It's too long a story. But um, spending some time with my real father, with Mel, uh, you know, when we finally moved from New York out to Los Angeles, uh, I would see my, da- he was traveling. He was doing what, what I'm doing. If I'm, I'm, as soon as we're done with this, I'm getting in a car and driving to Minnesota to do, do a concert tonight. Um, but when he and I, when our families would get together on holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, my sister and I would always go over and be with my, my real dad. Uh, it was really kind of fun to be in a very different atmosphere from the one I grew up in. And we really would, as corny as it sounds, we really would gather around the piano and, and sing Christmas songs. And, you know, and dad could actually let his hair down a little bit and be silly. 
those were those were good memories. And uh, I'm very fortunate that I had both my dads, that I had my real dad as long as I did. And even though I lost my stepfather when I was a teenager and he was really my rock, the person who brought me up, I'm thankful that I had them both. And I have nothing but good memories about my Christmases. I never had a tragic Christmas like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened on December 25th. So, you know, knock on wood, I've been very fortunate. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. So I want, people to be able to, I want people to know how to get the, the song, if we may. Um, yeah, as I say, we, we've had uh, your website going across uh, the, the bottom. Go to my here. website uh, for my, my concert schedule and anything, anything else I want to see. There are videos on this that people can see. Oh, he doesn't just sing Christmas songs. <laughs> uh, and it is stevemarchtorme.com. One word all the way, Steve, M-A-R-C-H-T-O-R-M-E.com. And um, you can follow me on Facebook. But the song, if you want to, can be downloaded from iTunes or from Spotify or from Apple Music because I've been told I have to buy presents for my girls. So please download. <laughs> they're, they're, they're requesting those? I can't believe it. Uh, it's hard to believe. Hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Better put that call into Santa quick. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, we'll, 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 we'll take care of it. <laughs> hey, there you go. Well, All right. Well, thank you very much. I, I much appreciate it. Not a problem at all, Steve. We'll tell you what, everybody, as we said, stevemarchtorme.com for all things Steve, as we've had across the bottom of the screen. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Steve, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, and stay healthy, my friend. You you do the same. Good you night, everybody. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed Music Night at the Majestic's Holiday Extravaganza, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and at musicnight.net. Music Night at the Majestic is a copyright production of Starliner Media. Any use of this program, its audio or visual images, without the express written consent of Starliner Media, is prohibited.